We are continuing on with our NHL offseason plan series. Today, we're working on the Chicago Blackhawks. Will Captain Jonathan Taves return after a season away? And what other moves will they make this offseason? We'll discuss that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned today, we continue on with our NHL offseason plan series. Of course, in case you were not following along from the very beginning, we are going in reverse order of the NHL standing. So I started with the 31st ranked team from the regular season, which was Buffalo, and working our way up backwards here. So we're now on the Chicago Blackhawks. So the Blackhawks are an interesting team here. Uh, they're a team with a lot of solid veteran guys, but at the same time, they've been out of the playoffs now for a few years, and it's hard to say what direction this team goes in. So we're going to take a look at their regular season stats, followed by their cap space, and see where their situation is with that. And then we're also going to look at any expiring contracts, and then talk about the five burning questions facing this franchise this offseason. So let's dive in and take a look at how the regular season went for the Chicago Blackhawks. So the Blackhawks finished with a record of 24, 25, and 7 for 55 points. Things actually got off to a pretty good start in the beginning, but of course kind of came back down to earth as things went along here. They finished with a minus 25 goal differential, so obviously not great. Not surprising though for a team out of the playoffs. Surprisingly though, they had a really good power play. If there's any really good success stories this year, this was one of them. The power play went 21.7% success rate for 11th best in the NHL, but Different story completely on the PK, where they were 28th in the league at 76.8. Now, obviously, when it comes to salary cap space, that's a bit of an issue. They've only got $4.5 million in cap space available for next year, but they have a minimum of $10 million in long-term injury reserve right now, which would come from the contracts of Brent Seabrook as well as Andrew Shaw. They also had LTIR money for this year for Zach Smith, but of course his contract is now expired. And of course they had longtime captain Jonathan Taves, who makes a hefty salary, also on a long-term injury reserve. And of course we don't know his status here as of yet. So if he returns, they'd have a little bit over 10 million bucks, which would take their overall cap flexibility, we could say, up between 14 to 15 million dollars. So let's take a look at what expiring contracts they have this offseason and see what they have to deal with to manage that money. So looking first at the restricted free agents, we have the fairly newly acquired Adam Gaudet, who they picked up from the Vancouver Canucks in a trade for Matthew Highmore near the NHL trade deadline. They also have David Kampf, Pius Suter, who came over his first season in the NHL, of course, a Swiss-born player, had a pretty decent rookie campaign, and there are some question marks on his future. A lot of that's going to boil down to what he wants for a new contract, and we'll discuss that in the next segment here. Uh, we also have Brandon Hagel, uh, who just came off a gold medal win with Team Canada at the World Hockey Championship, so great experience for him. Uh, we also have Alex Nylander, who was out all season, another player who they had on LTIR, and we had defenseman Nikita Zadorov. Now, on the UFA side of things, we only have a few names. Um, really, it's debatable if any of these guys come back. We get Vinny Hinnestrosa. There is a chance that the Stan Bowman and the Hawks do resign him. Not completely sure what the odds are, but if they do, it's probably going to be short-term and fairly inexpensive. Um, but Zach Smith likely doesn't come back. Of course, they traded Artem Anisimov to the Ottawa Senators. A couple seasons ago for Zach Smith, and Smith has spent the bulk of his time in Chicago on injured reserve. Uh, he's been having a lot of back issues the last few years, and to be honest, I would not be completely surprised if he ends up calling it a career. I haven't really heard any updates on his health condition or his desire to continue playing, so I really can't speak for him in that regard, but it's just based on all the injuries he's had, I wouldn't be shocked if that were the case. And then we also have Brandon Peary, who of course uh, was teammates with, with Hagel on Team Canada at the World Hockey Championships, also a gold medalist. And Peary's one of those guys that's bounced around here a fair bit, seems to score in bunches, but also has a hard time staying at the NHL. So I'm not sure if Chicago brings Peary back or not at this point. But obviously, there's not a ton of contracts there, most of which are the RFAs be more likely to get qualified. And it doesn't give them a ton of money. Like I said, they only have maximum 14, 15 million, and that's assuming Taves returns. Um, so how are we gonna proceed this offseason? So let's now jump in to the last segment here where we take a look at the five burning questions facing the Chicago Blackhawks this offseason. 
And, of course, question number one is definitely, does Jonathan Taves return? It's a huge question mark hanging over this Blackhawks organization. This season could have been better if Jonathan Taves had been present. I mean, they got off to a pretty decent start, and they were without Jonathan Taves and young center iceman Kirby Dock. Now, that was another big blow for the Hawks this year. Of course, Kirby Dock uh, was released to go to the World Junior Championships to represent Canada, ended up being named team captain, had a huge tournament planned ahead, but of course never came to be. Very early on, uh, he got hurt and was out for the tournament and missed majority of the regular season. So that was a big blow for him, big blow for Team Canada, of course, and a major blow for the Chicago Blackhawks once the NHL season got going shortly after that tournament. Uh, obviously, I don't think they really regret sending him because it was a great opportunity, but that's what happens when you have players that are technically old enough to, uh, to still qualify but are also good enough to make the NHL. If you you know if they're hurt when they're not with you, it always usually stings a little bit more. But obviously uh, for Doc and Team Canada, they had a pretty good tournament. But unfortunately, he was unable to play for majority of it. But had they had those two guys in the lineup, the regular season could have been a little bit different. I mean, you have to wonder here, uh, based on what Jonathan Taves is going through, will he be back though? Like we really don't know a lot about what's going on. All we know is he has some sort of an illness. Uh, that last season, or last offseason, I should say, uh, he was battling some different symptoms, um, one of them being, I believe, fatigue. Um, got diagnosed with some sort of different illness, so we don't know what it was. And now he was out all season seeking treatment to, uh, to move forward here. So, of course, I don't know if this is something that's a lifelong illness. Is it something he's able to recover from? Because we don't really know. He's been very private about it, which is totally within his right. But when it comes to making, you know, projections and predictions and looking forward here for as a, you know, to analyze things, it does make it awfully challenging. Now, we've seen updates throughout the season, occasionally from NHL sources, indicating that things were progressing well with him and that, uh, you know, at this point, they were expecting him to likely come back next season. But until we get an announcement saying that he's doing much better and he's going to play again, there's certainly that question mark, and we really don't know. So, unfortunately, this question is not one that we can really put an answer on here right now as I record this video, but it's certainly going to have a major impact because, obviously, if he can come back and play and be his usual effective self, then that's an excellent hockey player to lead and produce for this team. If he's not going to be able to do that, then that's a boatload of LTR money that they could potentially use to, to exceed the cap to have other players in this lineup. So it's it's going to make things difficult here not knowing, and it might make things hard on Stan Bowman planning for the season if he doesn't really have a clear indication on how everything goes. Because I'm sure once, if they had good news on Taves and they knew for sure he was going to be able to come back, I'm sure they would likely would have announced something or there would have been some sort of interview with him or something to that effect. But that's a huge question mark that it's going to be difficult to answer until they come out and give us further updates on his health condition. Now, burning question number two is what does the future hold for Dylan Strom in Chicago? Strom's a player that's been surrounded by somewhat of a trade rumor for almost two years. And he's been, you know, got off to a bad start to his career, really slow development. Things were not going well with the Coyotes. Uh, you have to wonder if that was more on them than on him, but we really don't know everything that went on there. However, he gets to Chicago, gets reunited with former junior teammate Alex DeBrinkett. And absolutely caught fire. His first year in Chicago was really, really good. But then since then, it's been okay. It hasn't been terrible. Not like it was in Arizona, but he's not up to the standards he was in season one with Chicago. There was a lot of talk that he could possibly be traded given uh, his contract. Obviously, last year he was an RFA, got a short-term deal. Uh, so he's going to be due again in a year's time for a contract. So it's really difficult to say. I mean, personally, I think they need to find where Dylan Strom fits in this lineup. And obviously, you know, a guy like Kirby Doc projects to be a number one center. Uh, so obviously that's a huge part here. But then, of course, whether or not Jonathan Taves is playing has an impact on where you slot a guy like Dylan Strom as well and then the rest of the, the lineup. So obviously, I do think there's probably, I'm going to probably put it at about 50-50 that Strom was traded, but he, there's a 50-50 but I also think, saying that, that there's also his equal opportunity that he does return. But Strom is a player not guaranteed to come back. I'm not sure that he is fitting into their long-term plans here. Now, burning question number three is what holds the future? What does the future hold for Pius Suter, who came over 
from Europe, had a solid rookie season, got off to a really good start, did cool down as the year went on. But, you know, uh, he's going to need a new contract too. He had a one-year entry-level deal due to his age. So, obviously, he's already due as an RFA now. Needs a new contract. There was word that because of their type cat situation that they might not be able to afford him. I mean, he's a more mature player, does have a history of success in Europe, now has a, a decent season in the NHL. And depending on what he is expecting for a deal, they may not be able to accommodate that. So, as much as they had him for one year, things went well, it's quite possible that he could find himself on the move. So, again, a lot of these question marks are going to be answered by the LTIR pool that they have to, to use for cap relief and whether or not Taves is in the lineup. That's how much of an impact that one player is having right now on this franchise. And you have to wonder here, too, as we go into the next question, is does this team continue to kind of try to retool and get back at it and try to contend for the playoffs? Or at what point do they say we need a rebuild? I mean, this team had a ton of success. Three Stanley Cups with Kane, Taves, Keith, Seabrook, etc. Like those guys, are, you know, really set this foundation for this team for a long time and brought a, a level of success that they hadn't seen in a long time as well. And now we're at a number of years, even though they have some really good players and guys like, uh, you know, Duncan Keith can still play. Patrick Kane still playing at a fairly high level. We'll see about the future of Jonathan Taves. You know, Seabrook is done now. Uh, Corey Crawford is done now. You know, obviously some of these guys are at the end of their line here. But at you know, one point, do you kind of say we need to take this through a proper rebuild and get this done the right way to be relevant here yet again? Every time you go through cycles, you know, this team is, uh, I don't know, like if you retool, you're probably going to, you know, you're never going to get that high, high pick in the draft. You're, you're always going to be kind of meddling in and out of the playoffs. Like, I just don't know. I personally think this team should consider a rebuild, but it seems to me like they're constantly retooling here the last number of years. Do they consider rebuilding question? Question number four for me is, would they move Duncan Keith? I mean, I don't see Taves or Kane finishing their careers anywhere else. I mean, unless they go to the Hawks and ask for a trade, I don't see them going anywhere, and I'm not sure we're in a situation where that's going to happen. Unless they really have that burning desire to go chase one more cup before it's over, um, I, I, they're going to retire Blackhawks, in my opinion. Now, Duncan Keith could be one of those pieces that's moved out, though. I mean, he still has a little bit of time on his contract. It's a little bit more reasonable as we get nearly closer to the end of it. And I could see him being attractive to teams that are, you know, looking for that one more experienced player to kind of put them over the hump here to be a more serious Stanley Cup contender. I mean, like I said, we've seen some of their other pieces move on, some of them due to retirement, some of it was through free agency, but some of the guys that were part of their Stanley Cup championship teams, and maybe Duncan Keith is that next player. I mean, there has been talks about him possibly finding himself on the move here in the last year or so. I mean, we don't have any rumors right now suggesting that there's anything active going on behind the scenes or anything of that nature, but you have to wonder if Stan Bowman and company would consider finding a new home for the veteran defenseman. And lastly here is, do they address goaltending? What do they do here? Coming into this season, to be honest, I thought the Blackhawks were in very, very serious trouble. After Corey Crawford was not re-signed, uh, they were, you know, obviously uh, took a big hit in that, but that was their own doing. They chose not to bring back Corey Crawford. We had word going into free agency that Crawford uh, wasn't going to be offered a new deal. So they had Malcolm Subban and in comes Kevin Lankinen, who had come over from Europe and had only had a brief amount of time in North America, came in and really did a solid job. Now, I'm not really convinced at this point that Malcolm Subban is, is a, he's never going to be a starting goaltender. I'm not even sure he's a quality backup goaltender. Lankinen did surprise many last year, though. But at the same time, he can't do it all himself. And you have to think that if you keep the number of games played down a little bit, it would kind of create more of an opportunity for success. So do they consider dipping into the veteran goaltender market? There's going to be a number of veteran goaltenders that are on expiring contracts that are going to be possibly be UFAs this year, or they could consider making a trade. There's a lot of teams out there that there are at least a handful that would move a veteran guy between the pipes too. So you have to think they need something to solidify that position. Like I said, Lankinen might be the starter, but I don't know how things are going to go in that regard. I think I would want to give him some help 
if you're going to seriously think you have any shot at making the playoffs. But then again, like the other questions I've asked is, do they consider rebuilding? Is Jonathan Taves coming back? Those are all questions to me that kind of all go hand in hand here, and we really don't know the answers to them. So it's really difficult to peg exactly how Stan Bowman is going to tackle this coming offseason. We know, obviously, they have a decent pick in the 2021 NHL draft. So they have a decent odds of getting a decent prospect, but based on where they're picking, I think they're probably looking at a player that's going to be a couple years away before they make the jump to the NHL. Uh, so it's really hard to say where this team goes. This is one of the more challenging videos, I must say, out of all the teams we've talked about here so far and what they're going to do. A lot of it is more easier to predict, easier to see. You can kind of see a clear path of what's needed. And this team really does need a little bit of everything, in, in my honest opinion. I'm just not sure how Stan Bowman is going to go about doing that with a really tight salary cap situation and some big contracts like Jonathan Taves with so much uncertainty hanging over the franchise. So let me know your thoughts on the Chicago Blackhawks team and what you expect from them this offseason. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. Stick around for the rest of this series as well as all the news and rumors on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.